why Mars? Why not the moon? Why not Enceladus? Why, why is Mars the destination? Uh, Mars is the proper destination for us because it's the closest planet that has on it all the resources needed to support life and therefore civilization. Uh, for the coming age of exploration, Mars compares to the moon as uh, North America compared to Greenland in the previous age of exploration. Uh, you know, Greenland was closer to Europe, Europeans reached there first, but it was ultimately not a place where a new branch of society could develop in any substantial way, whereas North America was the new world. For our generation, Mars is the new world, and we should embrace that challenge. Now, using those same analogies, you know, we had pioneers that came over to North America and, and you know, gave us everything we have today, but it was a different mentality then. I mean, people would die. It, it came with the territory. and. Today, if people go explore Mars and we actually colonize Mars, people could die. Will the human populace, will America accept deaths on another planet? Or are they going to say, well, why didn't we test somewhere first? Well, if I mean, they don't die on Mars, they're going to die on Earth. <laughs> but, um, but there's a perception difference. Well, no. I mean, uh, people die. All people die. That's our fate. The question is whether we accomplish anything while we're alive. Okay, and by going to Mars and creating a new branch of human civilization and open, ultimately opening up a new world, not just for humanity, but for the entire community of life, we're accomplishing something of transcendental importance. Okay, you know, I had an uncle who landed on Normandy Beach. People died there, but they did something important while they were alive. Okay, and should we shun challenge? You know, I mean, should we say, no, let's not do anything, then that is wasting our lives. It's waste it is while we are alive that we have the chance to accomplish something of immortal importance. And if you don't attempt to do that, you're wasting your life. So we go to Mars, we develop a new civilization there, but how do we live there? I mean, it's, it's a much more hostile environment than here on Earth. So what, what do, I mean, you, you said we've got the tools necessary to live there. We what are those tools and what do we need to do to actually make that happen? Well, uh, we know how to survive uh, on Mars today in terms of uh, exploration sorties. We have in-space life support systems and so forth. Uh, if you're talking about how a community can survive, you'll have to learn the craft of making use of Martian resources. We'll have to learn how to extract water from the Martian soil, or better yet, geothermally heated water from the deep subsurface. They give us both of lots of water and also power. Learn how to, uh, we, we already know how to make fuel and oxygen on Mars through simple chemical processes, extracting it from the atmosphere. But we'll also want to grow plants on Mars. Uh, we'll want to learn how to make uh, fertilizers on Mars. We'll want to learn how to make glass on Mars, bricks, plastics, metals, wires, tubes, habitation structures. As we learn this craft, it will become increasingly possible for uh, uh, first a Mars base and then ultimately Martian communities to be self-sufficient on Mars. When we learn that craft, Mars becomes habitable to humans. That's the task. Would you ever uh, try to terraform Mars and turn it into more of an Earth, or would you say, no, leave it as is and just build habitation there? Well, terraforming Mars is a task for the future, uh, but I think that ultimately humans, Martian settlers, will terraform Mars because uh, it's the nature of life to take barren environments and transform them into those that are friendly for the development and propagation of life. And this is what human settlers on Mars will do. And by so doing, they will make Mars far more habitable, both for humans and for the entire community of life. And why haven't we done it yet? I mean, uh, during the Apollo era, it seemed like the next natural destination was Mars. But then yes. we just stopped. We went to low Earth orbit, and we've been nowhere ever since. Yeah, we had a massive failure of political leadership in this country of historic dimensions at the conclusion of the Apollo program. NASA was ready to go to Mars. NASA's plans were to be on Mars by 1981. And they had an entire integrated space plan. They would have had a permanent Mars base by 1988. And if that had gone forward, uh, frankly, the first children born on Mars, uh, circa 1992 perhaps, might have been graduating high school this year on Mars. Um, the, uh, that was the future that was abandoned when the Apollo astronauts came back, Nixon, while riding in the back of the seat with the astronauts and enjoying the ticker tape parade, was busy scrapping the assembly lines uh, that um, 
you know, uh, made the Apollo hardware and it's shutting the program down. It was as if Columbus came back from the New World the first time and Ferdinand and Isabella said, okay, let's just burn the fleet. Okay, so it was a disaster. It remains a disaster. Uh, we had a tentative push towards resuming uh, a destination-driven space program. Unfortunately, too tentative, too slow, too uncertain by the Bush administration, so they did not get very far before there was a change in administration, and now we're back to square zero. Um, Does it need to be done through the government? Can it be done through private space? You've got a giant SpaceX rocket behind you. Could a company like SpaceX bring humans to Mars, or is it just too expensive? Well, hopefully someday. I know that that's Elon Musk's vision. But uh, SpaceX, uh, it's a large rocket by uh, most standards. It's a small rocket compared to the kind that's needed to send humans to Mars. It's just a medium lift rocket. We need a heavy lift rocket. And as we speak here, it hasn't been tested yet, but hopefully it will work. But we've got a ways to go before um, a private uh, entrepreneur like Elon Musk can send people to Mars by himself. Now, if the government was to commit to go to Mars and decided to buy services at fixed prices from commercial space companies, well, then he could mobilize a lot more money and perhaps create the sort of systems that um, are needed uh, with funding. That might be one way to organize such a program. But the actual profit motive as such for going to Mars is not yet apparent to the private sector. And so really, if we're going to send humans to Mars at this point, it's uh, very probable the government's going to have to foot the bill, and that means the government is going to have to decide that it is something it wants to do, and that means the people are going to have to tell the politicians, we want a space program that's actually going somewhere, we want a space program that actually opens the space frontier, we're willing to spend money on a space program, we're spending $19 billion a year on our space program, half of which is going to the human space flight program, okay, but we want one that actually goes somewhere. This program has to deliver. We're willing to accept risk. We're not willing to accept non-performance. All right, Dr. Zubrin, where can people find more information about you, purchase your books, and learn more about Mars? Okay, well, first of all, the Mars Society is having its international convention this year in Dayton, Ohio, at the Marriott Hotel, August 5th through 8th. It's an open convention. Everyone's uh, invited to come. They can find out more about that and about the Mars Society more broadly at marssociety.org. I've also written a number of books. Uh, my best known one is The Case for Mars, which describes uh, the plan for how to send humans to Mars. My most recent one is this book, How to Live on Mars, which is a humorous take about life on Mars. Uh, it's advice to immigrants to Mars from an old hand. It includes a lot of science and technology, but it also includes uh, tips on how to put one past the NASA bureaucracy, how to make money selling real estate to newcomers, etc. cetera. Um, and, and so it's a lot of fun. And I believe they're all available on Amazon, so if you've got yes. a Kindle, you can get them on your uh, iPad or... You can get them uh, Kindle books from Amazon, or you can buy the regular book from Amazon. Awesome. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. Well,